For today's video, we are back once again in the Fallout Shelter Dungeon of Doom Quarantine Central, and we have purchased a M2 SSD USB adapter to use to see if we can get Windows and probably Linux installed internally on this rather than using this clunky external drive. So let's get started. So I'm going to go through this step by step. Um, of course, you're going to need a few things. And there's actually a couple of different ways of doing this. Um, this is the easy way, from what I understand, is the way I'm going to do it. Um, if you put it, the SSD, the M2 SSD in this uh, USB caddy, you basically go on, load it just like you're doing the regular external, you know, USB SSD. Um, but then once you get all, all the software and everything loaded on that, you can just plop that inside the VCS, load it up, and it'll install right there. I think it'll still technically be a virtual drive, a VHD, but I don't know. We'll find out. The other way of doing it, which I may try at some point... Um, is basically starting the install on, say, a laptop or a desktop computer that has the M2 SATA SSD slot on it, get to the point where everything is basically installed onto the drive, but not, not installed, I'm sorry, where they load all of the files onto the drive, but not actually installed. Basically, you run until the first reboot, Instead of rebooting it, you shut it down, take it out, plop it in the VCS, and then start it up, and it should basically continue the setup on the VCS and install it. And I don't believe that one. I believe that's a regular install. Well, I guess technically there's a third way. Somebody said you can clone an existing hard drive onto the SSD, plug it into the VCS, and it should work. Maybe we'll try that at some point, too. I don't know. For now, I think this will be a good enough way to, to do it. It should, in theory, make the uh, response time, the, the speed on the, the uh, Windows programs, and that should run a little bit better if it's running off the internal drive versus an external 3.0 or 3.1 USB. So why don't we go ahead and get started with that? Um, I'm going to assume at this point that you already know how to download the ISO files for... Uh, for your Linux distribution or and for Windows, so I'm not going to go over that. There's instructions online as far as how to do that. For the Linux one, we're going to do Ubuntu. Um, seems to be relatively straightforward, uh, but we'll go through it step by step how to get all of this onto the internal SSD. Okay, the first thing we have to do is go over to this Haslio Win2 USB, open it up. It's You need to run it as administrator, so click on yes there. That brings up this Win2 USB free non-commercial use. And it's going to ask you to browse for the Windows uh, file. So you just browse here. I have it on my desktop. Just click on Windows, open, and they ask you to select which operating system it is. Click Windows 10 Home, click on Next. Please select the destination disk. That's where you find your flash drive. And you need to select GPT for UEFI. Click on Yes. And it formats. Once it's done formatting, it'll give you some some installation options here. You want to select the VHD option, nothing for additional drivers. Go ahead and click on Next. 
and it goes to an installing screen. And this will take a while. We'll come back once it's actually to 100%. All right, looks like we're done. We're at 100% now. So at this point, all you have to do is click the exit button. So are you sure you want to quit? Click yes, and you're done. Now all we have to do is put the M2 SSD back into the Atari VCS and boot it up and see what happens. So for whatever reason, this next step, the video didn't turn out, so I'm going to recreate it here. I'm using a different drive since I already installed the SSD back into the, um, into the Atari VCS, um, but you'll get the general idea anyway. If we're going to make this a dual boot um, system, we have to allocate the space on the SSD drive uh, so that we can have a SSD, uh, uh, an area for the uh, Windows and an area for the Linux. Uh, so basically what you have to do is you have to get a partition tool of some sort. Uh, I use this one, the Aesis uh, Partition Master. Um, it's pretty easy to use. So I think all you have to do is click on this and then you can make your adjustment to the space here. We'll just split this up however. And then once it, this is like I said, this isn't the actual drive. I'm I'm filming this after I'm done with everything else, so um, this one's a little bit of a smaller drive. But I got it set up and everything. This pretty much the same way. So just ignore that space. Um, so then once you get the space allocated, you just click the apply button up here. It'll pop up saying one operation is pending. Apply the change now. Click yes, and it zips through it. Sets up the two partitions and you're done. And that's it. So now we have the um, Win to USB, the uh, files for Windows, and then we have uh, space uh, unallocated space. So uh, on the actual SSD, uh, the internal uh, M2 SSD, this was, I think, 249 for one and 251 for the other, but it doesn't really matter. So that's how you do that. I apologize for the <laughs> clunkiness of this, uh, but um, that's one step that I wanted to make sure that you included just in case you wanted to do a dual boot. Now, of course, if you're just doing Windows, you don't have to worry about it. So, so uh, back to installation. All right, so we got the uh, M2, M.2 SSD back in Atari VCS. So we are going to go ahead and boot this up and see what happens. All right, so we got our boot menu back up. Let's go down to Boot Manager, Windows Boot Manager. Let's see if that works.
it doesn't like the uh, graphics for some reason. But we'll get that set up, but it looks like everything is working fine. Other than the graphics. Let's see if I can get that fixed. I'll go in. Okay, now we're going to set up the Ubuntu um, USB drive so that we can load it up onto uh, the Atari VCS. So uh, basically how you do that, you have to get the image again, uh, the uh, ISO file, this, this file right here. Um, you can download that um, off the internet. Um, it's free, obviously. Um, once you have that, um, you have to get this also a free program called Rufus. Um, this allows you to go in and basically create a bootable um, USB drive. So um, once you do that, you put your USB drive in the one of your USB ports, of, of course. And uh, under device, make sure that it's selected here. For uh, boot selection, select disk or ISO image. And then next to this, click Select. And then you find the image file, which should be on the desktop here. Click Open. And then under Partition Scheme, instead of MBR, change it to uh, GPT. Then select uh, UEFI for target system. And that's all you can select it looks like and then from there you click on start and it says if this pops up select right in ISO image mode click OK warning all data will be destroyed click OK And then you just wait for it to complete. Finally done. So then we just close this out and eject the flash drive and plug it into the VCS. Okay, so now to install Linux, we're going to do the uh, Ubuntu um, version of it. Uh, we are just going to go ahead and go into our boot manager, boot from the USB drive and then go into the Linux install on the USB drive. I'm gonna just cancel out the disk check on here. And when this loads up, we are going to select install. Of course, langu language of choice. Then click continue. At this point, you can set up your network. I'm not going to set it up. 
I've heard that the adapter doesn't even work, so I don't know. I have a wired one too that I can, you know, obviously I can plug it in, but so we'll click continue here. And I'm just going to do normal installation. And here's where it's a little bit different once this loads up. You want to select the something else option here. Once you select the something else, you go ahead and click on continue. And then it's going to load everything up. Okay, so here um, you want to click the plus sign. After selecting free space, because that's the uh, unallocated space right now, so you click the plus sign there. It's going to pop open a window. And this gives you the entire size there, but we don't need to use the entire size for this one, so we can delete this out. Maybe. So we'll just put 20 gigabytes for it. And then for the type of new partition, you can select primary, location, beginning of the space, use as this one, ext4 journaling file system. Mount point is just this backslash, and then go ahead and click OK. That's going to refresh everything, and you're going to see that it creates a partition here. So now we go back, select free space again, click the plus sign. And this is what we're going to set up as the swap area. Now they say to make this one usually about two times the amount of RAM that you have. So I have eight gigabytes in there. So normally I would put 16 gigabytes. I'm going to just go ahead and put 64 uh, gigabytes in here because I plan on upgrading the RAM at some point. And then same thing here, primary, beginning of the space, swap area, click OK. That's going to refresh it again. And then this is the remaining free space we have. So we select this, click on plus again, leave this at the entire remaining space. Same thing, primary beginning of the space. Do this one again, the ext4 journaling file system and mount point go ahead and select slash home and click OK. And that is going to set up the three there. Only thing left is one megabyte of free space unallocated. So at this point, we just click where it says install now. And then go ahead and continue. Ask where you are. Just log in automatically. And now we're in the install phase. So if all goes well, when we get this all set up and we reboot, 
we'll have to go into the boot manager again, but it should give us the option to go in and select either the Windows boot or the Ubuntu boot. And we can boot into either one. All right, now it says to restart. So I'm gonna hit the restart. It's probably gonna pop up a warning saying to unplug the flash drive. And then press enter. So remove the flash drive, press enter. And then as soon as it boots back up, I'm gonna go into the boot menu. We're um, going back to Boot Manager here, and there's both Ubuntu and Windows Boot Manager. So we're gonna boot into Ubuntu just to make sure it works. Enter there. Okay, we're there. Um, yeah, the TV, the display is off a little bit. I need to figure out how to get that adjusted. A lot of stuff is off the screen, including the power button. So why don't we go ahead and try to shut this off, restart it, and see if we can boot into Windows. Boot Manager again. Go down to Windows Boot Manager. And there's Windows. Again, same thing on this, all the stuff is like off the screen, so. But that is it. So that is how you can get both Windows and Linux loaded onto the internal M2 SSD. If you uh, have any questions or want me to go over anything else, Leave it in the comments below. Otherwise, thanks for watching, and we'll uh, see you on the next one.